एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर आदर्श दीप एंड टूडेज टॉपिक इज फिशिंग गियर्स एंड क्राफ्ट मैन हैज बीन यूजिंग वेरियस मैथड्स विद और विदाउट गियर्स टू कैच द फिश एंड अदर एक्वेटिक रिसोर्सेज सिंस प्री हिस्टोरिक टाइम्स एंड द फिशिंग गियर्स हैज अंडर गॉन एवोल्यूशन इन डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड गिविंग राइज टू वेरियस मैथड्स ऑफ द प्रेजेंट डे ऑल्सो द कैचिंग कैपेसिटी इन कैप्चर फिशरीज इज कम्बाइंड एफिशियंसी ऑफ फिशिंग एफर्ट्स ऑफ द फिशरमैन एंड एफिशियंसी ऑफ द फिशिंग डिवाइसिस सो द नॉलेज ऑफ फिशिंग डिवाइसिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्टडी इज नीडेड टू नो अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टेंस टू डिवेलप टेक्निक्स फॉर फिशिंग टू एक्सप्लॉय फिश स्टॉक्स इन द रिवर्स एंड द रिजर्वाइल्स सो for proper and scientific management of fishing from different resources the idea of fishing gear in accordance with the size and habitat of the fish is essential it is also important to design the craft and vessel of new generation which should be fuel efficient the eco friendly and responsible fishing techniques for eeaz is necessary as we share our borders with the neighboring countries energy conservation in fish harvesting processing and transportation is also essential so this these are some of the practical aspect of this chapter so let us study the chapter in detail the catching capacity in capture fisheries is the product of combined efficiency of fishing effort of the fishermen and the efficiency of the fishing devices so fishing devices help to obtain the overall goal of high sustainable yield in the fisheries although if we look at the worldwide scenario the fishing devices are technically quite advanced and mechanized but in india the fishing devices used in most of the fishing zones are still primitive there are two main types of devices used to capture fishes in both marine and inland fisheries first is gears and second is crafts so the fishing gears are the instruments used for fish catching like nets trap hooks and the fishing crafts are the objects which provide platform for the fishing operations carrying the crew and fishing gear for proper and scientific management of the fishing from different resources the idea of fishing gear and net is accordance with the size and habitat of the fish is essential as i have told you earlier that the oldest art of fishing in the form of stones and spears has been converted to complex traps nets and lines in our country though a large number of fishing methods are in use but all are not of common use throughout the country so the methods in use at a particular place depends on the type of fish to be caught topography of the river or the seabed topography means the natural physical features of an area so it is an important factor to decide the method of fishing then third is the availability of the capital that means that how much money one can spend on this and make it more profitable now before discussing the different methods of fishing i must tell you some important definitions so first is fishing unit the complete unit which includes fishing gears along with the vessel auxiliary equipment and the men power together constitute a fishing unit and the size of fishing unit is determined by the three factors number 1 is distance of fishing grounds from the shore handling and dispose of the catch and the geographical factors and the amount of catch by a unit depends upon its efficiency and the productivity of the fishing grounds that means the amount of fish catch will depends upon the number of fishes present in the fishing ground and how much efficient is your fishing unit is next important definition is of fishing cycle 
the fishing gears have to break off operations after a certain period of activity for rest and repair. So the entire period between the launching of a fish gear and launching it again after a gap is called fishing cycle. In other words, fishing cycle includes the time period from launching, hauling, emptying the net and getting ready for the next launch. The number of fishing cycles per day depends upon the daily pattern of occurrence of fishes. That means the density of fishes. So one have to study the pattern or to know the time at which fish density is more in the fishing ground. Next is type of fishing method used and the fisherman. That which type of method you are using, how many crew members are there and the fishermen are skilled or not. And third is the geographical conditions on the fishing grounds. So these three factors will decide that how many fishing cycle will be there in a day. Now come to the fishing methods. It is difficult to enumerate all the fishing methods in use in various parts of the world and also there is no uniformity in the names given to the various fishing gears used in commercial fisheries. Some common methods of fishing are on your screen. First is without gears. Second is fishing with gears. So broadly we can divide the fishing methods into two categories. One is without gears and other is with gears. When we use gears, these are again divided into two categories. One is wounding gears and other is non-wounding gears. So let us discuss one by one. First is fishing without gear. This is probably the simplest method of catching fish. So first is hand picking. In this, the fish are caught by the hand in shallow water. In some hilly parts or near the dams or the, where the water flows out through narrow channels. So the fishes that come out in the shallow channels are picked by the hand. This is a very old and simple method and it is used for catching murals, mollusks and the pearl oysters. Second is the stupefying method. In this method, fish are paralyzed by underwater explosion or by poison. But this method is not very useful as it kills all the fish indiscriminately. Certain chemicals affecting the central nervous system or peripheral nervous system are also used. The rotenone obtained from the plant Daris elliptica, Daris uligmosa and Daris legensis is a useful fish poison and is used in fishing. The roots of these plants contain about 10% rotenone. Third is weak electric current. This is preferably a new method and when we pass the weak current through the water, the fishes get paralyzed. So their activity is reduced and they can be easily catch. Now the second method, fishing with gears. As I have explained you earlier that any device or appliances or the tool which is used for catching the fish is known as fishing gear. So on the basis of their mode of working, they are of two types. One is wounding gear and other is non-wounding gears. Wounding gears include weapons, baited spring and angling by hooks, rods and line fishing. And non-wounding gears includes the fish screens, various type of traps and nets. So first is wounding gears. Large sized fish are caught by hunting them by using the weapons which includes spear, harpoon, rake and rifles. So first of all spear or notch. It is an ancient gear used to kill larger fish especially when they are concentrated in a small area. 
A spear consists of a split bamboo shaft of four and a half inches to six inches in length, fitted with a conical iron point. It is thrown at a large fish by a man standing in the boat. It is also used to spear the fish through holes in the ice or while the fish resting in the streams. Large carps and catfishes are caught by this method. Next is harpoon or ek katya. It is a modified weapon, has a shaft 9 to 10 inches long. A barbed iron point, maybe single or sometimes double, which is about 9 inches long, is attached to its, its one end. It is also known as fishing arrow. Third is Reke. It is a very specialized gear and consists of long handle with a long very thin blade at each end and hooks like a double bladed oar. You can see it in this picture. This can be thrown in the stream by the help of rope. The next method is angling. This is also very common in practice for fishing of large predatory fishes. It is a very old method based on the principle to offer a bait to lure the fish. After taking a bite, fish is unable to release the bait and is lifted from the water. Angling include three different types of gears. First is hooks, next is line fishing and third is rods. So first is hooks. These are very common fishing gears used by the general public to capture fishes from the ponds, lakes and rivers. In the fish farming, these gears are used to capture predatory fishes. Previously, a thorn was used as a hook and nowadays metallic hooks of various shapes and sizes are in use which have an advantage in the ability to pierce the fish's mouth. In this picture, you can see the metallic hook. It has several parts like eye, shank, bent and spear. The spear has inclined barb with the outer and inner parts. The hook may have one or two or many barbs. Different sizes are available which you can see in this picture. As I have told you earlier that it is a very old method. So here you can see a hook made up of bone from the stone age. Next is the line fishing. The simplest form of this gear is hand line, which consists of one or more hooks attached at the end of a cotton line, which is known as dory, held in hand. Sometimes the long rows of hooks and headlines are used for the commercial fishing. The headlines carry several hooks to increase the bait and the chances of fishing. The hooks are generally attached in pairs to balance the lines. The hook and the line gears are used for 2.4% of the word fishing. Third is the fishing rods. Sometimes long bamboo stick 6 to 18 feet long and the line is joined to the eye of the hook at one end and rod at the other, other end. The rod is held by the person for fishing. At the spear of the hook, the bait is applied. The bait is essential part of the line fishing. It should be carefully selected. Its color, smell and the movement will depend upon the fish to be caught. The commonly used bait are earthworms, prawn, caterpillars, beetles, small fishes or frog. So this is a tool used to catch fish usually in conjugation with the sport of angling. Nowadays flexible rods of different material are used. So here you can see the different types of rods like ice fishing rods. These are very short spinning rods bearing between 24 to 36 inches in length used to fish through holes 
in the cover of ice of frozen lakes and ponds. Second is the spin casting rod. These are designed to held a spin casting reel which are normally mounted above the handle and spin casting rods also have small eyes and a four finger grip trigger. So this is a modern type of rod. Next is the baited springs. While fishing by the baited springs, a strong but flexible piece of bamboo pointed at both the ends is used as a spring. Its two ends are bent till they nearly meet and are carefully adjusted with the body of a grasshopper, cockroach or a small frog serving as a bait. This is then suspended in the water by means of a string to which a float is also attached. When the fish sees the bait, the two ends of the spring separate in the mouth and the fish is lifted up. It is used for catching the murals. And now we will study non-wounding gears. This includes fish screens, traps and nets. First of all, fish screen. Cylinder bamboo sticks are woven to form a screen which is known as chachi, which is about 30 feet in length and 3 to 5 feet in width. These screens are set to surround the shallow tidal area at the time of high floods. When the flooded water recedes, the fish are left behind in the muddy pool and are collected. The screen is also set to mark off shallow area of rivers. The enclosed space in them divided into smaller enclosures by putting up earthen buns. The water is then bailed out so as to expose the fishes. This method is employed to catch carps, catfishes and murals. In this slide you can see that how church is set. Next is fish traps. Various types of traps are used to lure the fish which are allowed to get in but are prevented from escaping. They are generally used for fishing in shallow waters. Now first is the basket trap. The basket trap net consists of two dome shaped hemispherical baskets, each provided with an opening at the narrow end, as you can see in the figure. The opening is guarded by flexible recurved bamboo sticks with their free ends facing toward the inner side. Suitable bait in the form of balls is generally placed in the trap, which is lowered in water for some time. Fish that enters the basket are unable to get out due to the recurved nature of the sticks guarding the opening. Next is a cover pot. Sometimes a wide mouth earthen pot or vessel is used as trap. The mouth is closed with a thick cloth having a few holes to provide entrance. Suitable bait placed inside the pot induces the fish to enter the pot which is placed on the bottom of the river or the pond. It is also known as plunge basket made up of split bamboo pieces in the form of a conical basket 2 to 2.5 feet in height and have a small circular opening at the apex to collect the fish. It is used in shallow muddy water. So, live fishes like Chana, Heteronistis and Clarius batrachus are often caught by means of traps called the cover pot or the plunge basket. So, as I have told you earlier, the trap is dropped in the water and the wide mouth pressed in the soft mud. The fisherman then puts his hand to the opening at the top and catches the fish. This method is very effective when a large number of fishermen are working together and is used to catch fish in turbid or the muddy water. Here in this slide you can see some more traps of different shapes. First is bitted trap, 
then unta trap and box trap these traps are usually larger and often more permanent constructions they can be stationary or handled tidal traps are based on walls or fences forming v shaped constructions that and trap fish that have come in with the tide as the tide goes out typical salmon or the cod traps are caged like constructions as you see in the picture these are made from webbing with long ladder net to guide the migrating fish into the trap the traps can be made of bamboo rocks or nets now third is nets a net is basically a piece of webbing in which twines are intersected into rectangular meshes at the point of intersection between the twines there may be knot or simple interlacing the mesh size represents the distance between two points of intersection the net needs some accessories for its functioning these accessories are ropes and cables for spreading the net stakes which are wooden or iron structures to tie the net floats for floating the net sinkers or weights to keep a part of net submerged in water anchors these are the iron bars with flat and barbed end used to hold the net in place then thimbles to protect the ends of the cables swivels these are the steel structures to allow movement of the rope or the cables so nets are the main fishing gears made up of cotton flax hemp or other synthetic yarn like nylon these can be prepared by the fishermen themselves or by the cottage industries so various types of nets are in use these are dip net or lift net cast net which is also known as ghagariya jal triangular net purse net drag net or seams gill net and drift net so let us do some more details about these nets so first is dip net or the lift net the basic principle of lift net fishing is to keep the net in the water for about 5 to 10 minutes and then pull it out rapidly in this method the fishes which are over the net at that time may be caught sometimes baits are also put on the net or suspended over it on this principle varying nets of different shapes and sizes are used in different regions all these nets are fixed to frame for catching large and small sized fishes so basically the net is mounted on rounded or v shaped metallic or wooden frame and it looks like finger bowl and this net is either moved in water in a scooping manner or held in water for 5 to 10 minutes and then lifted up rapidly the smaller nets are operated by hand while the larger nets are dipped and lifted from the water by means of a long pole which is operated like lever the original simple hand dip net have gradually been transformed into permanent stationary lift nets operated from bridges made of bamboos and these are of four types or described by four names these are hela jal khara jal bisal jal and khorsla jal So as far as hela jal is concerned it is triangular in shape and operated by the handle made up of bamboo stick and khara jal is operated from stage implanted in the river bed bamboo pole is used as lever to operate it and bisal jal is exactly like the khara jal but it is operated from the boat and khorsla jal is rectangular in shape and operated by the strong rope to catch the fresh water mullets so in this slide you can see the hela jal it is triangular net made up of cotton and consist of two light bamboo sticks crossing each other near the end supporting the net a short cross stick is fixed near the apex of the triangle and a bamboo pole work as a handle 
to operate the broad end of the net is pushed along the bottom and then lifted with a jerk to throw the fish towards the handle. This is used to catch the prawns, catfishes and fry. Next is the Khara Jal. This is large size strangler dip net constructed as the Hela Jal but is operated from the stage or platform made up of bamboo pieces and these are implanted in the riverbed and the net is operated by a fisherman using a bamboo pole as a lever to lower or to lift the large net. Again you can see the Kautsla Jal in the picture and this is a rectangular in shape. Its size is about 8 feet into 6 feet and is suspended from the ends of two curved bamboo crossing each other at right angles. The net is lowered in the shallow water near the bank of the river by means of a strong rope and is lifted suddenly when fish pass over it. So you can see here it is generally used to catching freshwater mullets. Here you can see some of the small tip nets which are also known as scoop nets of different shapes and sizes. Now third is cast net. It is commonly called as Ghagariya Jal or the throw net. It is almost bell shaped. Its string are of cotton or nylon. On its lower circular margin are present weights called as sinkers to make it heavier. The number of meshes at apex is 50 and at the margins are around the 1000. The fisherman throws the net skillfully and accurately over the water from the shore or a boat. While throwing, net assumes the shape of umbrella when it drops and spread on the water. When the net sinks to the bottom due to the weights attached to the margins and the small fishes are entangled, it is pulled through a rope held in hand of the fisherman which is known as hauling. The fishes are then collected. Next is triangular net. This is a conical net shaped like butterfly and made up of strings. The mouth of the net is kept open by means of the bamboo sticks fixed like a triangle. One of the stick is longer and it is used as handle. The closed end of the net serves as a reservoir and is called bhog. The net is operated in shallow waters near the river banks and is slowly dragged in water with the help of a handle. The fishes enter in the reservoir and are collected. The net is operated from the boat also using a long handle. Next is the purse net. This is a purse shaped net and is operated from a boat. Purse nets are generally used to capture the migratory fishes like Hilsa in the month of October to January and large sized carps and catfishes are fished in May to July. In the river Ganga, purse net is generally used to catch the Hilsa. Two kinds of purse nets are used. One is Kharki Jal and other is Shangla Jal. You can see in this picture, it is a rectangular in shape made up of tanned cotton. The wide mouth has two flexible bamboo rods hinged at the two angles and forming upper and lower lip. A vertical bamboo is attached to the middle of the lower lip and passes upward through a ring in the upper lip. So you can see here. The net is suspended from a boat and the mouth is kept open by pressure on the bamboo pole. As Hilsa ascends the river during the floods, hence boats using purse nets move downstream. When a fish enters the net, mouth is closed by releasing the pressure on the bamboo pole. Next is the Shangla Jal. This is similar to the Kharki Jal. The length of the bag is 10 feet, the semicircular mouth is supported by 20 feet long bamboo lips. In this net, the vertical bamboo pole is replaced by a 
weighted cord for opening and closing the mouth. The operation of net is therefore more delicate. This net is set at any desired depth to catch the hilsa. In this slide, you can see how it works. Next is sea net or the drag net. This net is commonly used for fishing in lakes and rivers. It is provided with a main rope which carries the floats and the foot rope bearing the sinkers. The shape and the size of the net is varying according to the water source where fishing is to be performed. Mainly two types of drag nets are constructed. The first type consists of a bag with two wings and is called by several names as Peddawala of Telugu coast, Birjal of Urissa and Peria Valsai of the Coromandel coast. The second type of dragnet is wall of enormous length and the upper margin of the net is supported by strong rope which is known as head rope and provided with a large number of wooden floats. Along the lower margin is the foot rope to which a number of weights are tied. Sometimes stone sinkers are also tied there to keep the net in position. Both types of the nets are operated in a similar way. When they are operated from the boat, then they are known as boat scenes. And where, when they are operated from the shore, they are known as shore scene. And when from the beach, it is known as beach scenes. Beach scenes are also known as hall scenes. In this slide, you can see the boat scenes or the boat drag net. These nets are conical in shape, provided with wings. The mesh of the nets is similar in the center and increase in size toward the outer ends of the flanks. These are operated in the sea by catamarans or the boats. The scene trap the fishes. Towing is done with the help of coir. This is the shore scene. It is operated from the seashore or on the bank of the river. While a boat carries the rest of the net to spread it out in the water in a semicircular way, bringing the other extreme end of the net to another point on the river bank. Then the two ends of the nets are then slowly dragged by two parties of the fishermen. So you can see that it is a wall of enormous length and the upper margins are supported by strong rope which is known as head rope and is provided with the wooden floats and lower margin has foot rope and which is attached with the sinkers to keep the net in position. Again, this is a beach scene. It is also called the hall scene. It has two wings made of strong twines. The net is used in such a way that its one wing remain on the beach and other wing is spread on the right angle in such a way that when it is dragged slowly, it encircles the part, part of the water section. Both float and lead line do not allow fish to escape. Dragnets also used in the ponds. Here you can see that how the dragnet is used in the pond. Next is the gill net or the drift net. The gill net is named after its catching principle as fish are usually caught by gilling. That means the fish is caught in one of the meshes of the gill net, normally by the gill region between the head and the body. Thus, fish capture by gill nets is based on the fish encouraging the gear during the feeding or the migratory movements. So, gill nets are wall like nets with floats attached to the head rope and sinkers fixed to the foot rope. They are made up of cotton or hemp of various sizes of mesh and net is set in transverse direction of the migrating fish so that when the fish tries to swim through the net wall, the meshes form a noose around its head and the fish is caught. As the fish tries to escape, it gets stuck up behind the upper column. Hence, these nets are called the gill nets. 
In order to increase its efficiency, the meshes must be of the right size and also the shape for the fishes to be caught. An other important feature of the gill net is that it should contrast as little as possible with its surroundings so that it does not look like an impenetrable wall which the fish could avoid. Hence, various dyes are used to make net invisible. During the recent years, the efficiency of the gill net has been increased considerably by using transparent synthetic fibers instead of the natural fiber of cotton or hemp. These nets are generally used to catch big varieties of the fish and are therefore made of strong material with large sized mesh. In the evening, the nets are stretched across the river and fixed by poles. The net is hauled up in the morning and the fish entangled are collected. When the current of water is strong, several nets are fixed one behind the other. On the basis of their operation, three types of gill nets are used in the fisheries. First is set nets or the stationary nets. Second is floating gill nets and third is drift nets. Stationary set gill nets are net walls set on the bottom between the anchors. They are used in large lakes or the coastal fisheries and are set as straight walls or in a bow shaped pattern. Several nets may be combined to form long blocking walls and long poles are used as anchors. So in this figure you can clearly see that how the stationary gill nets are set. Second is floating gill nets. These gill nets are not firmly fixed to the poles but are simply anchored on the bottom and are suspended by floats on the surface of the water. They are called floating nets. They can be set at any desired depth and are made of finest and scarcely visible material. So in this figure you can see that how floating gill net is set. Then third is the drift net. Free drifting nets are specially used in sea fishing to catch herrings, mackerels and salmons. They are of considerable size, sometime up to 4 kilometers in length. They are not much used in the freshwater fisheries because of limited area. In very large lakes, floating nets are sometimes allowed to drift freely. In rivers, fishermen sometimes use small sized drift nets. Next is electrical fishing. A new method of fishing has been developed by the use of electric current of low voltage. Although it is not of common use, but sometimes it is used with precautions for the fishing. It is reported that fishes are attracted toward the electric field on the electrodes. Or in other words, we can say that the fish respond to the polarity of electric fields and swim toward electrode with increasing potential. So, if two electrodes are put into the water, the fish starts swimming towards the positive pool while the current was on. So a large number of fish can easily be caught by placing an node in the fishing net and the cathode near the boat. The advantage of this method is that even the large sized fish which escape being caught by taking shelter under the stones, rocks or weeds can be easily caught. Everybody cannot make use of this method as it is dangerous to apply it without proper precautions and training. Both AC and DC are used. AC means alternating current and DC means direct current are used in fresh water and IC was used in the sea water. Let us see the methodology of the electrofishing. The anodic effect are produced by immersing two electrodes in the water as I have told you earlier. The anode and cathode is 2 is to 3 in size. 
and anode carries a hoop net at its base. So when current is on, fish respond to the polarity of the electric field and swim toward the positive pole that is anode. So the stunned fishes assembled at the anode are removed by the hoop net. The electrodes are handy and operated on the battery and the entire operation is conducted from a boat. In case of sea fishing, a condenser fed by a DC generated supplies the IC. The electrodes are set at the mouth of the trawl net. As soon as the fishes are concentrated at the anode, in the stunned stage, they are captured in approaching the trawl net. Sometimes fish pumps are also used to suck the accumulated fishes. The next method is light fishing. It is reported that fishes get attracted towards specific lights. So this attraction of fishes toward electric light has been found to be of great advantage to capture the fish. It was observed that red color is ineffective, yellow with white is highly effective. So this light can be used to capture the fish and blue is good for the fingerlings. So if you want to catch the fingerlings, use the blue color light. So this is all about the fishing gears and in the next part of this chapter, we will study about fishing crafts. And in this session, we will discuss how different questions may be framed from this chapter. These questions are framed in two categories. One is very short answer type questions which you have to answer in two to three lines or sometime in a single word. And the short answer type questions you have to answer in a single paragraph. So let us discuss how different questions may be framed from this chapter. First of all, very short answer type questions. So first question from this category is, what are fishing devices? Second question is, what are fishing gears? Next question is, name various types of accessories of nets used to catch the fish. Next question is, define fishing cycle. Next question is, what is seen? Name two types of seen net. Next question is, define gill net. Name various types of gill nets. And the last question from this category is, what do you mean by electric fishing? Next category is short answer type questions. So first question from this category is, describe gill net and drag net. Next is, define fishing gears. And also give a detailed account of hooks and lines. Next question is describe line fishing in detail. Next question is what is angling? Explain different methods of angling. Next is write short notes on following. First, beach scene. Second, cast net. Next question is, describe the electrical fishing in detail. And the last question from this category is, describe any four different types of net used in fishing. Now do all the questions and make a PDF and send it to your teacher in your college. It will help you in examination. Goodbye. Thank you.